four, three. All right. Hello, everybody. I'm Darkat87. I have commentators with me. You guys want to go? All right. Hello, everybody. What's up, everyone? I'm Radish. I'm another Dead Space 2 runner. Hello, I am crazy. I am another Dead Space 2 runner. Awesome. Well, I think we can pretty much go ahead and get started. A little bit of downtime right at the beginning of the run. We'll have plenty of time to out in the category. So, game here. So, time starts when we gain control. Uh, after I hit accept difficulty here, there's a short loading screen. Uh, so, I'll just do a short countdown from here. And then we'll get started. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and select that now. Alright. I'm just going to start about 2, 1, go. Alright, so just to give a brief overview of the beginning of the story here, we've woken up on this spaceship call about 3 years after the event of Dead Space game. And we don't have any memory of why we're here and we're trying to escape. Later we're gonna find out that people on this ship have been using us for research and other people that have been exploring Parker, which gets all these here called Necromorph, and trying to use us to Parkers, which they already did. One of you guys wanna explain about uh, about a little bit. So, um what we just did, there's usually a beginning cutscene, like an intro cutscene. Um, but what we did is uh, use the hex edit, or like it's a DLL file, and we can just skip that, which really takes out a lot of the beginning story. So um, basically, what we're coming up to right now is another cutscene. And then after this, we're going to do a trick called a wall boost. And a wall boost, basically, if you get high enough FPS in the game, you are able to run up certain walls, and you can run up these walls to skip certain obstacles. Yeah, so we see a really small example of it, a trick called table boost. Only saves about three or five seconds, but we're going to see tricks later. A lot more important. But like Crazy said, we skipped the entry. A bunch of the stuff I just but really helpful for grinding run because the hardest skip in the entire game is about four and a half minutes in the run and the intro cutscene is about four minutes so it's already pretty brutal trying to grind that trick top time thing with the intro cutscene <laughs> yeah you're gonna notice that most of the uh, story that we usually see in this game and doing glitchless is not in the game because of how broken this game is we skip about an hour over normal glitchless, just based off all of all of these tricks. So, most of them will be later in the run, but we are going to see a few early game. Yeah, this run has gotten a lot faster. All right. Hey, Sharkat, uh, we need you to turn down your noise gate in OBS because your mic is cutting in and out on the stream. Okay, sure. Thing. Cool. Thank you. Okay, let me know if that sounds any better now. Alright, so we just picked up the flashlight. This is our first, well, I want to say gun. We can't actually fire it, but this is going to be useful for another trick coming up right after this first wall boost. So there's a tutorial there that says restore health. And using that tutorial spawns the flashlight in, but it turns out that if you use the tutorial again, the flashlight will just keep spawning over and over again, and you can grab it from anywhere on the map. And the nice thing about the flashlight is that picking it up cancels any animation that you're in, so we're going to use it to skip a short little cutscene coming up. Alright, so this is the first trick, table boost. And we got it, let's go. Yeah, so we, um, using our FPS in order to boost up this wall, just, 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 just to skip around running around some tables and stuff 
save a minimal amount of time. The next trick that he's going to do here is he's going to open the restore health tutorial. Um, and after he presses Q, that's what that's what's going to spawn in the flashlight. Mm -hmm. And so after he um, hits E to pick up the flashlight again, he's going to skip that animation there, which is a little, little small cutscene that saves a little bit of time. There is another trick that you can do here where you can skip um, the cutscene after you fall, out, fall out of this vent. But that would save time in-game time, but it would actually be slower for real time. So we're not going to do that straight. Yeah, I think we should mention that briefly now. So usually we time this game in game time, meaning that we remove all the load screens and the game, the timer also pauses when you pause the game. So obviously, since this is a real time event, we're going to be using RTA strats instead. So you're going to see things that are a little bit different than what we would normally do in the run, but it's not it's not that much different. Most of the strats are pretty much the same. That little animation skip we do is a pretty small time save, but since the loading screen takes so long, it's not actually worth doing in this case. All right, so I mentioned that the hardest trick in the game was about four and a half minutes in, so we were about to that point. Uh, we are gonna attempt this. If we don't get it, it's not a big deal. It doesn't lose too much time if you miss it, but ideally we can, we can show it off, so I'll do my best. Uh, would you guys like to explain the trick? I'm gonna try to focus. Yeah, so yeah. what he's gonna be doing here is there's gonna be a necromorph that's gonna be near that door at the end of this ramp. And um, he's gonna be using a body to push it through the door. Um, and that, so that automatically that loses um, most of his AI. So that he's gonna be trying to get back into the, the room that he started. So he's gonna be running around all over the place, you'll see here. This is actually pretty, pretty weird. Pretty bad um, RNG here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got he got screwed over by the wheelchair. So right there, he, he lost all of his AI. So he's just not moving at all. But he did get him through. So if he gets him right there, he'll keep that door open. And that's going to cause a deload later, which we can use to hit a... Um, to do a stomp launch. And eventually hit a door that skips a pretty big section of... Uh, of this chapter. Yeah, so the way this game so, loads stuff usually is that it'll load one or two rooms at a time. Usually the room you're in and maybe the room before or after. But the rooms before or after will be only half loaded. So there'll be no light, doors don't have collision, and the textures aren't there. But the, the walls and the floors are still there. But if another room is loaded when the game tries to load the next room, it can't. So since the enemy's holding open that previous room, this room's not going to be loaded now, as you can see here. So this lets us do two things here. One, there's a locked door here that just doesn't have collision anymore. We just walk straight through that. And then a room even further down here, this quarantine room, isn't going to be loaded at all. So like Radish said, we're going to be doing a thing called a stomp launch, which gives us a little more speed off the ledge than just walking off. And hopefully we'll be opening a door and loading in the level around us. Nice. Okay, we got it. Wait, I'm Very stuck. nice. What am I stuck on? So that skips a pretty long uh, fight that also has a lot of randomness to it because the enemies can spawn at different times at random places and you can lose a bunch of time if you get a bad pattern. Yes, that is the hardest skip in the game. Yeah. Getting that is, is, is really nice. Very nice, yeah. Alright. So I guess we didn't really mention it before, but we picked up two power-ups so far. The first one being Kinesis, which is the power-up we're using to grab and throw items from a distance. And the second one is what we just picked up, which is called Stasis, which lets you slow down enemies and objects. So we do use that for a few tricks, but uh, for the most part, they're used for combat as well. And that's pretty much chapter one. There's still a little bit left, but that's all the, the difficult <laughs> sections of this, this chapter. Alright, so now, now since we're getting to the end of the hospital here, we're going to be getting to the first store of the game. So there's a little bit of ammo and weapon routing that we have to do. So there's a, there's a couple purchases we have to make. For this first store, all we have to buy is a suit, and the only reason we'd have to do that is because there's a door that locks if you don't buy a suit. There is a way to skip it, doing something similar to quarantine skip, but it's actually not faster, which is why we don't do it. It's about like 10 slower, isn't it? Ten, yeah, it's like, 14, it's like 15, yeah. 10, 12, depending on how fast you do it. But it involves, it involves that pushing skip. an enemy, so it's kind of yep. random. And it's another necromorph push, but that one is way worse than the one that you saw. Like. 
yeah <laughs> way way worse so it it's a good thing that it's slower in my opinion anyways because i don't really want to do that trick yep. but and you you saw just how weird that the fir the first one looks i mean besides just looking funny if if the enemy decides to move in a way like that like that wheelchair that got pushed in front of him you have to actually move that out of his way so little there's little things like that can just lose you a bunch of time so it's I'm, I'm, I'm also kind of glad we're not doing suit skip uh, but who knows maybe someday someone will figure it out and be fast okay so we bought our first suit so now this door won't be locked anymore the hardest boss fight in the game coming up another thing that's that i'd like joke, to mention <laughs> is that it's this true. suit we're going to be keeping this suit throughout the entire run we're not going to be switching it at all so yeah. um there's no going to be no suit upgrades at all yeah on harder difficulties people opt to buy other suits just to make the game easier but we don't really need to do that in this category enemies don't really do a lot of damage to us the hardest boss ladies and gentlemen there you go that's it <laughs> yeah the dead space series isn't exactly known for having the greatest or the most difficult boss fights uh which you'll see <laughs> you'll see later all right so that is pretty much it for chapter one as soon as we get out of this vent, we'll be in Chapter 2, and we'll be out of the hospital. Yeah, so this is where the game is really going to start picking up in terms of glitches, and uh, you're going to see a lot more broken brokenness of this game. Exactly. Yeah, we're going to have a trick coming up pretty soon called Plant Boost. And that's going to be a more significant use of wall boosting. So we're going to be boosting on a pot plant, and use that to get out of bounds over on my right over here. But first, to get up to that area, we've got to take this elevator. One thing I'd like to mention is that we've actually found a much bigger skip in Chapter 1, but unfortunately, there's not a way to get Kinesis and do that skip. And so since you don't have Kinesis, you can't pull that uh, the cover out for that vent, so you're soft locked in Chapter 1. Yeah, when I was if crawling that through that vent... Possible. Oh, it would be it would be so nice. It would be like 6 minute time save, but... Yeah, we actually have an extension category called a kill the tripod, where you actually can do that skip and you just end the run in chapter one, but unfortunately we can't do it. Alright, so I'm going to be running backwards here. I'm going to gain a little bit of height on this corner first, and then run over to this plant. Alright, we this got over. another wall boost. Ah, I missed the stomp launch. <laughs> yeah, if you stomp launch there, then you can get a little bit of extra speed as you fall off, but yeah. you missed it unfortunately. Alright, so this trick works how a lot of tricks work especially in Dead Space 2 and 3, which is you go out of bounds, you hit a checkpoint, and then you just reload from the checkpoint, and the game pulls you back in bounds to where you're supposed to be. So you can't actually progress normally without checkpoint restarting there, but fortunately the checkpoint extends just out of bounds and we can hit it. And now we've got to do a little combat section to unlock this door here. Be picking up that for later so we can sell it. Yeah, he's just going to be killing these exploders as fast as possible as they spawn out of the vents. He's going to be using the third one to grab its uh, sack, so he can kill the fourth one a little bit faster as it jumps out of the vent. Because normally those have invincibility until they're all the way fully out of the vent. Yep. But for some weird reason, if you have either the hand cannon or that um, that sack that the uh, exploder has, then you can kill him way sooner and that saves a good chunk of time. Yeah, they, they just have, thing, a, they have a lot more health for some reason there. Sorry, Another saying? thing that he's going to be doing here is he's going to be grabbing one of those poles off of the train and he's going to be shooting that um, infector as soon as possible. But th the sooner that you uh, shoot that infector and kill it, the earlier that that door will open. So if you just wait for him to infect the body, that's way slower and we'll lose a good, a good amount of time. Oh, we didn't really explain hack panels yet. Uh, Crazy, you want to explain that? So, hack panels is a kind of pseudo-random, well, it is random. So, um, you have three, like, ba basically hacks that you have to do, and um, there's that circle there, and what he does is he runs his mouse around that whole circle to find blue points, and these blue points is where you can, um, what is it, left click, or right, wait, uh, left click, yeah, yeah. You can left click yeah. on those blue points and it will do the hack. You have to do three of those, but each position is random. So you can lose time there without even knowing it pretty much, which is not very fun. Yeah, they, they don't look like much, but it is it is pretty difficult to get them as fast as possible. And as you run a really high risk, the faster you go, 
because if you click on a red node or just anywhere that's not a blue node, you get this four second damage animation and then you have to start the entire thing over again. So if you miss the third one because you're trying to go too fast, you're going to lose like 10 seconds sometimes. Something to mention here is that that quick time event right there, normally after that E would disappear on his screen, he would checkpoint restart in order to um, skip the animation of him uh, kind of boosting into the train. Um, but that is way slower RTA, so we're not going to do that strat. Yeah, it's another one where it saves about a second and a half because it teleports you into the train by the time you restart. But the loading screen is like seven seconds, so it's actually a lot slower. Alright, so we've got to do this fight here to progress to chapter three. And the game likes to give you these, these moments where you have sort of struggle mechanics, where your aim is pretty restricted. Like, my aim is moving without me touching the mouse here, as Isaac kind of swings up and down. So you have to kind of fight that while trying to land your shots. We're trying to go for impales here to one-shot these enemies. Oh, I guess we can one-shot them anyway. That was a really weird fight, but that works. Wow, you got a collat right there. Yeah, I got the one-shot and took the legs off the other guy. Oh, oh yeah, I suppose that we scary should mention... brute right there, you just one-shot him. Yeah. yeah, I think we should mention this too. In case you haven't played this game before, uh, these games have really unique combat systems, and the way that you deal damage to enemies is actually by dismembering the limbs instead of going for headshots. So shooting the head or the body actually does a lot less damage. So ideally with enemies like that, usually you want to take out the legs first. Uh, that usually yeah, makes things a little easier. Two. That was chapter 2. Alright, and speaking of combat, this chapter has a lot of combat sections. So, for this room... We're again going to be locked in here until we're done with this. But that's actually okay, because like I mentioned before, we have to buy certain things at stores. And we are going to be buying two guns here. And so we're going to need a lot of ammo and things to sell to be able to afford them. So after he kills these enemies, this room is going to be on a timer until um, the dialogue with a character named Strauss is over. Um, we skipped the introduction of Strauss in uh, the quarantine skip, but basically Strauss is a crazy guy that um, killed his wife and kids in a, well, before the whole Necromorph outbreak started. Yeah, and he was um, also infected by the, or had contact with the marker, which is why they were also experimenting on him too. He's just a little bit more crazy than we are at this moment. Yes, yeah, so what the marker does is if you have direct contact with it, it makes you crazy. See, that's the reason why Isaac is like hallucinating stuff throughout the game. But Strauss is a lot further on, so uh, Strauss is a lot crazier than us, basically. Yeah, and so you're going to see this a lot, actually, in this next elevator too. So like Crazy said, there's a lot of places in the game where you'll be in an elevator and you'll actually reach your destination, but the door won't unlock until the character's done talking to you. So in this case, we actually use that to our advantage because we can use the store without losing any time. So we bought the line gun and the javelin gun there. The javelin gun we're not gonna have for too long. It's only used for a couple places in the run, for a few skips and to save some time. The line gun we're gonna be keeping through the entire game. It's extremely broken, both in terms of using it for speed tech and also it's just really, really strong. <laughs> It's the most damage you can get with one shot, pretty much. Yeah, until we buy the detonator, but that's, you know, you can kill yourself with that one. That's on very dangerous. If, if you, yeah. if that one has splash damage, so if you shoot it too close, uh, it'll also kill Isaac as well, which is not good. Did that run yesterday, actually? All right, I didn't so th see that. That was very sad. So. All right, so upcoming next is going to be our first instance of zero G clipping, which is. Yeah. I, um, it's basically the tech that you're going to see a lot of skips, like especially chapter 7 skip, that's the biggest skip in the game. A lot of the yep. big skips in this game come from 0G clipping, so um, what he's going to be doing is, be, it, you, but you need high FPS to do this as well. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to be um, flying in 0G and um, you're going to be kind of kind of bashing your head against like a, a corner or a piece of geometry where two, pe where two places meet. And that'll eventually allow you to clip out of bounds, like just completely out of bounds. And so that can allow you to fly and hit checkpoints and do some setups and different stuff like that. So what he's going to be doing here is he's going to be opening that door and using the door frame to clip out of bounds, like you'll see. 
Yeah, the walls are pretty of... paper thin in most of these areas, so you can clip out in a lot of places. Yeah, so what he's going to be doing, instead of hitting that um, panel right there and then having to run all the way back and then fly into that hallway, he's just going to be skipping all of that and then hitting the checkpoint right after okay. the door. <laughs> Actually, oh, that's okay. Yeah, normally um, for RTA strats there, you would hit the door um, and fly back at the same time, and that would load the room in, which is faster RTA, but it's okay since he didn't get it. We still got the skip, gonna... so we still yeah. save time. That's okay. Yeah. That skip saves about 17 seconds, so it's not huge, but it is a pretty considerable amount of time. Yeah, so besides wall boosting, zero-g clipping is one of the oldest pieces of tech in this game. Basically what happened was Dead Space 3 came out, a bunch of people started glitch hunting it, and they found those two things. And then they thought, well, I wonder if this works in Dead Space 2, and it does. <laughs> so, uh, and actually that plant boost I did, I think might be the oldest skip in the entire game. Yeah, that, that, still has, that segment yeah, that still hasn't changed. <laughs> it's still the same. It's been the same way since like 2013 or 2014. Well, minus the stomp launch, that's like really new, but it's like 0.3 seconds, I think. Alright, this is one of these hallucinations we were talking about. Or I also forgot, or I think we forgot to mention, for a game this long, it is very optimized. So, you're not going to be seeing like tons of time save in an optimized run like currently the world record is about 30 seconds off of the community sum of best which is pretty crazy yeah oh um, we should mention we should mention this right here so I mentioned we can deload levels so i called that elevator through the wall there and so since the game thinks i'm supposed to be in the elevator it deloads the upper floor but since we're still on the upper floor we just fall down and we hit a checkpoint and skip the elevator ride yeah, so he's going to be doing his best here to manipulate the way that these enemies are spawning in and try and get them to spawn in through the vents as fast as possible. Because the earlier that they that he kills the last infector, the earlier that he can leave this room. So. That wasn't too bad. It's a pretty decent pattern. Ideally, you want three exploders to spawn there because they jump out of the vents the fastest and they're the easiest to one-shot. But that pattern was okay. So we're going into the church and... Way back when, um, actually not way back when, not that long ago, instead of going a little bit into the church and then doing a skip that you'll see, we would um, go to the left and uh, use the line gun to clip a piece of geometry, place a mine on it, and then clip it through, and then hit a fuse and just skip the entire section. But what you're going to be seeing is a little bit different. Um, we're going to be using a uh, some tech called floor clipping, um, which is basically if you get on top of a table or any piece of geometry that doesn't necessarily move and it also allows for you to clip through it. You can clip through the floor and um, in this area it's actually really good because you can get on top of the bacilla and then hit a load trigger a little bit later on that will put you further into the level um, and this saves a really big chunk of time over glitch just like five minutes or something crazy. So. Yeah. So, so this, what this he just did right oh, go ahead. Oh, you can... So oh. what he just did right there is he um, clipped his uh, well, he shot through the wall with a uh, a line gun mine, and what this does is it explodes a fuse on the other side, which you need to explode this fuse to be able to unlock the door. Mm -hmm. Usually it was only possible so that uh, you could backtrack, so you'd have to do it from the other side of the door. But with this, you can shoot it through the wall and you can hit the fuse just like that. No, okay. <laughs> My pause yeah, buffering okay. was a little slow there, that's okay. We can do it again. Yeah, so... What you saw there was that he fell off, he did a precise lineup, and then he uh, he ran off. And um, so what that did was uh, he was trying to load in by hitting a load trigger. Because that, that piece of level is still there, it's just not really loaded in. Um, and you can see right now he's doing a uh, little bit of setup to get through the floor with this, uh, with this table. Got Oof. a little greedy there. So sometimes you can clip through pretty fast like I did the first time. And sometimes you get kind of stuck on the floor. You can kind of recover it by walking sideways like this, but it's kind of risky because you can fall off. Let's try that again. Yeah, so essentially this chapter, like they said, this chapter just goes in a big circle. So those doors are there so that you can backtrack, but we can exploit that. And we used to just skip all of chapter 4 and go to chapter 5, but it turns out that chapters 4 and 5 are both loaded together. And so this section that I'm trying to load in is actually the end of chapter 5. So it actually works out that it's actually faster to go halfway through four and then skip to five rather than just skipping all of four. All right. 
Well, we made it back up here again. Stand a little further down. So what he's going to okay, do nice. is something called a pause buffer. And while he is paused, the level is loading around him. And it's usually not possible without pausing to load into that room. But if you pause, it gives the game enough time to load. All right, so this next section, um, there's usually a big pack fight here. So the first thing that he's going to be doing is um, he's going to be abusing the javelin gun here in order to hit that um, that big tripod a lot earlier than you're supposed to. Um, and what that's going to do is... Um, so I'm not really sure how this works. Sharkat can probably explain this way better than I can. But he's yeah. going to be skipping this pack fight, essentially. Yeah. So there's a, there's a trigger there that he pulls you into that starts this fight. But if you... If you kill the the boss before he starts dragging you, then you you can actually avoid hitting it completely because there's if you hit the trigger this door locks after a timer, but instead I haven't hit the trigger yet during the cutscene, so I have enough time to run hit the trigger, run back and open the door to deload it, and then backtrack through the room again, and we just don't have to kill any of those enemies. This skip is actually slower in uh, in game time. Yeah, it's like six to seven seconds slower. Yeah. Because in game time there, as soon as you kill the boss, you checkpoint restart. And again, because the loading screen takes so long, it actually loses time. It makes sense that it loses about 6 to 7, because that's about how long the load screen takes. I'm also shooting out this vent here, because when the elevator reaches its destination down here, it won't load in until an enemy falls out of here and we kill it. But if we just shoot out the vent, the enemy never spawns. So the door will the room will load in as soon as we hit the bottom here. If I may, is there a good time to read a quick donation? Uh, this is actually the it. perfect time. Go for it. Epic. So earlier before the run began, we actually had a forty dollar donation from Spoiled Freckle, the co commentator to the God's Trigger run, and as promised, this was for Gabriel first try Poggers. Thank you so much, and that also went to our target of showing the hamsters we are currently $40 in and we only need $110 to make that happen. So again, if you'd like to contribute to that target, just type in exclamation point donate, uh, type in your donation and be sure to click on that particular target and it will go through with your dono as well. Back to you, Shark. That's a very generous donation, thank you. And with that, we are back to uh, this we just generally refer to this as the Dana cutscene. So we skip a lot of the dialogue with Dana in, in, in early game, but essentially she claims to be trying to help you and telling you that you have dementia because of the marker, but that she can cure it. Turns out they are actually her and her her goons are actually unitologists, which are a religious cult that worships the marker and want to build more of them. So they want Isaac to build more markers. But as it turns out, EarthGov, who runs this space station, actually don't want that to happen, so they're trying to kill us right now. <laughs> now, usually this part used to be pretty much glitchless, but there's actually a skip that was discovered very recently in the past couple weeks, where we can actually skip the second phase of this boss fight. So there's going to be a gunship similar to this one on the lower level down here, once we finish the first phase of the boss. Oh, I got this weird glitch. Okay. There's a weird audio glitch that happens here that usually only happens on hardcore, but we got it on casual. That's really weird. Okay. Anyway. Oh, really? Yeah, some of the audio cut out was weird. Or like the, yeah, music, so the music cuts out. Basically, um, next to the warship, there's going to be a bunch of canisters. Um, and it, we, we figured out a little bit back that if you hit the canisters from anywhere, then um, that'll put you at the end of that huge uh, long animation and cutscene. Yeah, the end so, level trigger is essentially on the canisters. Yeah. But it turns out you can actually shoot. They're actually active during the cutscene. But uh, well, I'll let you explain how we do it. I gotta, I gotta actually yeah, do it. Yeah, so we've uh, Shark here figured out, because he's a friggin' genius here. Um, <laughs> he figured out that if you just literally line gun through the glass and do a setup, then you can hit the uh, the canisters before you even enter the cutscene. Oh yeah, there's, so no, there's no collision on this glass, yeah. Just doesn't yeah. exist. So he's going to be stasising that guy just so that he has a little bit more time. He's going to be aiming at a spot and then shooting, and then he's going to hit the canisters. 
No, nice. that'll put him nice. at the very end of it. So that saves about yes. twenty-ish seconds, depending on how yeah, fast. Yeah, that's actually setup is. really easy. So. Yeah, it. The setup we were trying to do originally was really, really precise. Fortunately, that one is really easy. Also, as a side effect of that, the camera gets locked, so you can see this is what the game would look like with fixed camera, which is pretty, pretty jank. It goes away as soon as we move the camera, though, so we're all good. Not a soft lock. And that is early game. So this is probably the split that most people dislike the most, I would say. Uh, it's not that bad anymore, but it tends to have, uh, I would say, the most downtime in the run. But there are two pretty big skips now, and the first one's coming up right at the beginning. So like I mentioned before, there's a lot of elevators that won't open until characters are done talking. But we are going to deload the upper floor, similar to how we did earlier in Chapter 3, by calling this elevator through the wall. And that will deload the area and will land on the lower floor. Now there's a ceiling we also have to fall through. So I'm going to be putting V-Sync on to lock at 30 FPS so that I can lag the game a bit. Alright, I think we got it. I think we're in the vent. Yeah. So we fall out of the vent like a necromorph, and we continue on. That saves about half a minute, so that's a pretty big skip. And then this room's on a timer as soon as you kill this enemy. And since we have to wait, we're going to use the store again. So we're going to get rid of Javelin now and replace it with Detonator. So Detonator is really, really good. It's like the secret OP weapon of Dead Space 2. Casually, you wouldn't know it's so good, but it's it's actually really really broken. It does a lot of damage. You do have to be careful. Like I said, it has a large splash damage radius. So if you shoot it, if it blows up too close to yourself, uh, it can still one shot you even on casual. Yeah. So we're gonna be using the detonator for um, some rooms that Oops. we would need to get through normally, um, but we can't because um, some of the enemies will hit us before we can get through. So for example, there's a room coming up where you need you need the hacking panel before any of the enemies hit you. And you can technically do that without the detonator, but um, the way that the enemies will will, um, will charge you is random. So we're gonna be using a detonator to place, it's, it's like a, it's like a, um, it's, it's, it's a real defensive weapon in that you can just place mines everywhere, so. Yeah, it's really, we actually end up using it a lot more as a utility tool than a weapon most of the time, but when we do use it in combat, it's very, very strong. Yeah, we also use the detonator sometimes for, for some skips, so. Oh yeah, besides the fact that you can lay traps with it, it also sends vertical beams up in the air. So that's going to be really useful in a couple skips where we're deloading the level, because when you deload the level, there's no, there's no natural light that emits in this game. So unless the textures are loaded in, there's going to be no light in the room. So for some of the sections where we have to navigate in the dark, we can actually put those mines down as sort of guides to say like, okay, there's a thing over here we need to run to, and here's where it is. Alright, so this is that room that Radish was just talking about. So casually, you're sort of intended to use the detonator to just lay a bunch of traps and wait for them all to come to you. And once you've killed all the enemies, you can progress. But instead, we're just going to run straight to this hack panel, lay a trap here, and try to do it as fast as possible. Nice. That was a pretty good hack pattern, too. So in that case, we didn't actually need the mine, but the enemies can charge at random times. So even if you get a good hack panel pattern, it's possible for them to just run at you too early and there's nothing you can do about it. And this part right here is one of the main reasons why Chapter 6 is so long, is that there's just constantly cutscenes back to back to back. Yeah. We're going to be waiting here, and then we have to go into another cutscene with Elodie. And yeah. then right after that cutscene, there's a second one. Yeah. That's, well, a, that's even longer. So well, Once we get to the very end of Chapter 6, things really pick up. Mid-game has probably the hardest and flashiest tricks in the entire run. Starting with the end of this chapter. It's just pretty much non-stop from there, minus a few you know, breaks for cutscene and stuff like that. This part of the run definitely has the most downtime. Yeah. Which, speaking of which, if there's any anything to read, uh, this whole chapter is a pretty good time to do it, if anything comes up. 
but we are yeah we're meeting Ellie here I'm Isaac. the two I, Isaac and Ellie eventually become friends and work together we're not gonna see a lot of that because we skip a lot of cutscenes and dialogue between them so you don't get to see a lot of that character development but they do eventually start working together obviously they're they're, they're not too friendly hey, I can help you. when they first meet here Besides, you know with everyone trying to kill each other and everything don't you agree? but I actually don't know if I have any health packs left so I'm gonna have to take one of these next rooms a little more carefully because there's a bunch of enemies after this elevator right here and we're gonna try to just run past them it's they, they can have random patterns so them hitting us isn't really a big deal it's mostly that there is an enemy type called a puker coming up and I don't know if we've explained them yet but the reason why they're so bad for the speed run is that they have this projectile attack and if they hit you with that it slows you down for about 10 seconds and the only way to cancel it is by taking damage or using a health pack but if you don't have any health packs you can't cancel it and if you're already at full health it also doesn't work so I took a hit of intentional damage earlier and we're good okay he didn't get us all right Eagers are probably the worst enemy in the game for sure Just for the fact that they can slow you down from afar like that. Yeah. Also on hardcore, um, they're way more dangerous too because after they die, they can, they can, uh, they'll keep spewing out their, their their little like puke, and so they can literally hit you after they die. And there's also some memes where if you shoot one with the detonator, it can be, it can like fly towards you, and that happened to another runner named Looney. Um, he was pretty far in the run in hardcore. And he shot a puker with the detonator and it flew towards him and killed him. So Yeah, the game has ragdoll physics and at high FPS things can have a tendency to just launch across the room. So that that can be very unfortunate. Also that skip we just did there is called gym skip. And we did something similar to quarantine skip, except instead of using an enemy to hold a door open, the doors are so close together that we can actually just open one door, and before that one's done closing, we can open a second door. And the room on, on the other side of that second door isn't able to load. And with the room unloaded, we can just run straight through some locked doors and skip a pretty long fight section. All right, let's check our inventory. Ooh, we have a stasis pack? That's actually really good. This elevator is the longest elevator in the game. Yeah, we got a somewhat lengthy little conversation here and then got to wait a bit. Okay, so the next thing we're going to have to buy is in the next chapter, which is coming up pretty soon. We're going to be buying the flamethrower, which actually was a meme for a long time, but there is actually one trick in late game we need the flamethrower for. So we'll need about 11k to afford that. So we should be good. I also want as many stasis packs as possible, mostly for chapter 10, which is the Ishimura. There's a lot of combat there, and just a lot of enemies all over the place. You want as much stasis as possible to uh, make that section easier. To make sure pukers can't hit you. There's there's one trick in particular we actually need stasis. So we definitely gotta have it for that. Alright, so this is transport hub. There is a skip we can do to skip about half of this section. Uh, but for the first half we just have to wait. There's gonna be... Actually, do you guys want to explain this? There's gonna be a brute coming down they're gonna be using for a trick. So basically the brutes have collision on them themselves. So... What the brute's going so what Charcot's gonna do is he's going to line up in a specific place and then he's going to stasis him at a specific time, which basically will slow him down and manipulate his pattern to like run at him immediately, right when he gets to the side of the door. Right when he gets to the side of the door, he's gonna stasis him again, run at the door, and the brute with its collision is going to push him through the door, hopefully. Yes. Brute clips are very difficult. Very hard. Yes. They are very hard. They're mostly consistent. Sometimes if the enemy does something you're not expecting, it can sort of ruin the trick. But assuming that doesn't happen, 
it's consistent as long as you get the setup right. So we're going to be baiting him by shooting him to get him to charge us, and also stasising him to get him to stand in the right spots. And if we do all that right, hopefully we should clip to the door. And even if we don't get it, you can sometimes get a backup by having him punch you through, but that's not very consistent at all. Yeah, there was actually a different setup that saves about six to five seconds, where he will just straight up punch you through. Um, but we don't do that anymore. I think Crazy was the only one who really... I was the only one that really did it. He was the yeah. only one that really did it, and I don't think he does it anymore. I did it, I did it once, but that was before I realized how inconsistent it was. Yeah, it's really bad. Ooh, he was, that was close. Ooh, we got lucky. We got, close, we got lucky. Good. Ooh, but he got the backup, yeah. He got the punch. So, so normally, well not normally, but it, it's random on whether or not he'll punch you back. So, it, that was very lucky. That was that extremely happened. lucky. I was like, glad that happened. <laughs> very lucky. That I guess that does not usually happen at all. By the way, um, this elevator right here, you can just checkpoint restart as soon as the elevator closes, and that'll put him at the bottom, um, which saves about 20 seconds, so. Also. Ooh, another stasis pack? Let's go, dude. Here is the biggest skip in the game, found by none other than Crazy Bad Gaming, right? So, <laughs> since you found it, I think you do the honors of explaining it. So basically, this trick was known about for about three or four years before I actually found it. Um, but what was not what was known was there was a checkpoint that uh, you could possibly reach from the zero G, but no one was able to reach it. And then one day, I was very bored, and um, I just started jumping at it in zero G. And it turns out if you get maximum height in this room, so what Shark is doing is a setup right now to get the right coordinates. So basically you go all the way to the top and the zero G will actually like automatically make you go uh, either backwards or forwards. Like once you hit the very top and he'll just launch off at the very top and that'll give you just enough just enough z coordinate to be able to yeah to hit the checkpoint we're extremely sure. lucky that this works because most zero g's don't extend very high up in the air this one goes ridiculously high up into the air for some reason a lot higher than any other one usually. another reason why we were so lucky is because chapter seven before this was found was the worst chapter <laughs> not a very good chapter because there was a trick called cup skip and cup skip is not a good skip. And it's, the reason why, it's pretty you basically, you attach a, a mine Very on nice, the cup. Very nice, by the way. Thank you. And yeah, and you throw it into an area where there's a bunch of fuses. Um, but the problem with that is the throw is random. So you would literally sit there and hope that you got it. And so that skip is very nice because it skips all of that. And it, it was it, about it, an hour into the run. So yeah. It was essentially, you get an, well, it was before my time, but from what I understand, it was essentially, you get an hour into the run, you throw the cup, if it doesn't work, you reset. <laughs> That's, that was pretty much it. Okay, so we did another short little trick here. There's an auto scroller in that room normally where the doors lock and you gotta fight a bunch of enemies and just wait for Ellie to unlock the door. And it always takes the same amount of time. But if you hit the trigger, for the auto scroller but don't hit the trigger to lock the door you can actually get back in this room so the benefit of that is that we're able to use the store without losing any time here in some other categories you would maybe buy a security suit here but in this case we're just gonna buy the flamethrower and what else do i want so we actually picked up two stasis packs which is really lucky so i don't need to buy any of those i think i'm just gonna do this and i think we're i think we're good yeah, that inventory looks really nice. So the flamethrower just got routed in uh, recently because of a new skip. So what the flamethrower... We're not going to use the flamethrower throughout the entire run, um, except this one place in Chapter 12 or 11 um, yeah. with this trick called Punch Up the Shaft. And um, basically what we do is... It used to be a meme, but basically what we do is punch up a shaft, punch up a mine shaft. And uh, we need to kill a bunch of enemies at the same time. So the flamethrower has a uh, basically like a grenade splash damage. And um, we can kill all the enemies at once, which is why we have it. Yeah. And the thing is, when you're trying to kill them, you're up pretty high in the air and they're pretty far below you. And you can't aim, like, you, I can't aim all the way down to my feet, as you can see here. So most of the weapons can't hit them consistently. And they can be in random spots, so if they decide to come really close to you, 
they're like if you don't have like the flamethrower or the pulse rifle or one of those guns you're you're gonna have a hard time killing them so it just makes it more consistent plus the ammo route's pretty lenient as it is and we're able to afford it so you don't lose any time getting it really so it's definitely worth it okay so got a little bit of a cutscene before chapter eight here but there is another really big skip probably the second biggest skip in the game right now and I'm gonna be taking a safety save here not because the trick is difficult but if we miss the trick we lose about three minutes because you can't try it again so we shouldn't miss it but I'm gonna safety save anyway just in case we do we, we can just reload from that save and we won't lose very much time you're gonna be seeing us do another deload once we get there by opening two doors in a certain order to get one of the rooms to not be loaded correctly the more we've we've learned about deloads, we've we've definitely found it's it's probably one of the most broken things in the entire game. I mean, just being able to control the level geometry is is pretty pretty broken. You can't do it everywhere, but in the places we can do it, it's it's pretty broken. So, I'm not sure we sort of explained this with chapters four and five, but this game isn't really split up into different map files like something like Dead Space 1 would be. It's all one big map, it's just that different parts of it are loaded in chunks. So as long as we can get out of bounds and there's some checkpoint that's loaded, we can hit it even if it's not in the same chapter. So even though we're in chapter 8, we're actually going to be skipping all the way to the end of chapter 9 from here. And the way we're going to do that is first by setting up this deload, which will let us walk through a locked door up here and then also get to this zero g area which is normally this is normally the end of chapter eight but we've just skipped that entire zero g section and now i'm going to be doing a setup here to hit a checkpoint all the way at the end of chapter nine it looked pretty good there is a harder skip you can do here but it's much less marathon viable and it only saves about 16 seconds, so we're opting to do this one instead. This one is pretty free. The other one is one of the hardest in the game. Like, the second hardest in the game. Other yeah. than quarantine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, and this room is another reason we buy Detonator as well, to kill these enemies called Guardians here. You can insta-kill these with the Detonator. Yeah. When the detonator lands, it, it shoots out those blue beams of light, like I mentioned. But before it hits the ground, if it if it hits an enemy, it, it acts like a grenade launcher. It just explodes instantly. So what he's about to do here is he's about to run off of the elevator um, and he is going to basically skip the rest of the elevator um, and it has a funny side effect if he does it correctly. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, the first time it. I didn't get enough height so it kind of teleported me back up. Oops. Okay, I accidentally burned a stasis back there. That's okay. Still have one left, right? Wait, do we have two? It's hard to see the screen shaking. Okay, I got one. Okay, that's not ideal, but hopefully it shouldn't be too bad. This is very funny. I'll let Shark explain how this works. Sure, yeah. So, uh, you'll see there's two pairs of uh, alien Strauss. Uh, obviously, that's not supposed to happen. Um, normally, this first pair that's sort of idle, not really doing anything in the cutscene, is supposed to despawn when you go down that elevator, but since we jumped out of the elevator, we skip hitting the trigger that despawns them. So when it spawns in the second pair, you just end up having both at the same time. Normally, there's this whole section in chapter nine where you're supposed to try, you're trying to like repair this this tram, and then you meet up with Ellie and Strauss, and you you ride it with them, and you get a bunch of cutscenes, and then you got to step off to go do something, which is where we ended up at the skip, but we just bypassed all of that with that deload and then zero G launch. Also, the background doesn't load in correctly, so you can just see that big JPEG right there. <laughs> just right in front of the black void. Very funny skip. 
We are yeah. coming up on chapter 10, by the way, which is easily the hardest chapter in the game because of how many difficult, fairly difficult tricks there are in this in this in this chapter. So yeah, it's nice that there's this cutscene here, so we get a little bit of a breather before we have to do a bunch of crazy, uh, crazy tricks in the run. So yeah, you get about so, four pretty difficult tricks in a row. So the tricks themselves aren't really the hardest in the game. It's just doing them all back to back, pretty difficult tricks. It makes the pacing of this chapter very fast, but it is very hard to get yeah. it all in a row. When it goes well, it's probably the most fun part of the entire run to play. And to watch, I think. Though there are some pretty wacky tricks in this game, so I don't know about that. But <laughs> Yeah, I would say Quarantine Skip in Chapter 1 is, is for sure the hardest skip by itself. But actually pulling off all of these skips in succession is really fast is probably harder. Just because of how long it takes, how many steps and stuff you have to do. All right, uh, do one of you want to explain flight deck? Since we're coming up to that right now, is that a stasis pack? Yo, we got a stasis pack. Um, so, so lucky. basically, flight deck. What he's going to do is he's going to perform a deload, and um, so this deload was known about, but um. We like the checkpoint we're about to hit uh, was known about, but we couldn't hit it because we needed a deload in this room that he's about to deload here. Um, but basically, we found this deload, and what we're gonna do is stomp launch to a checkpoint um, after the entire flight deck and uh, skip about what is it, a minute or a minute and a half, pretty much. Yeah, I think I think this one's like well actually the original setup was about forty five seconds, but this setup's a lot faster, so yeah, it probably is closer to like fifty or something like that. Yeah. Pretty pretty nice skip. It it, it just bypasses a bunch of walking and riding an elevator. Very boring section of the run. Yeah. That he just skipped right there. Yeah. Alright, so we mentioned that brute clips were very difficult, and uh, that is still true <laughs> in this chapter. It was true at Transport Hub, and it still is now. Uh, we're coming up to the second one of the run. There's only two. But first, we're going to be pulling those boxes there to skip a cutscene where we get knocked down by the enemy. And killing him gives us a checkpoint, which is nice in case uh, this doesn't go well. But we're going to be doing a similar thing to Transport Hub, which is shooting the brute to bait him into charging us and stasising him to get him in the right spots to be able to push us through the wall. Yeah, this trick is very similar to Transport Hub in that it's basically the same aspect of that. You're trying to get him to push you through the wall. But the only difference in this skip and Transport Hub is that this door is much smaller, um, which actually you, you would think would make it harder, but I personally find this easier than very Transport nice. Hub. Um, what he's going to be doing now is he's going to be doing a lineup. <laughs> oh yeah, fruit spin. Fruit spin. <laughs> Sometimes the enemy will try to it, like its pathfinding gets messed up because it's trying to find you, but it can't get out of bounds, so it doesn't know what to do. So sometimes it just spins in a circle. <laughs> we don't know why. So this one is um this brute cliff is regarded as easier than the one in chapter six, but they're about the same difficulty, pretty much. And it's really a personal preference, it's just how comfortable you are with the setup for either one. Now, I will say, this one is way easier to get is, is, is way easier to get screwed up on, because there are some instances in where if you stay sim a little bit too early, he can just straight up despawn, um, which is pretty unfortunate. There's also another stace, uh, instance where it's not your fault at all if this happens, but when you stay as him, he can just keep charging, and that'll just screw up the entire setup. Yeah. This happened to Shark, I think, last night? Uh, a couple days ago, so I, yeah. it, it happens. Yeah, yeah like, it, like I said, the it, tricks are consistent, it, except when sometimes the AI decides to do something you're not expecting, and brute clips are pretty new, so there is a chance that when some of those things happen, there probably is a way to avoid it, and we might just not know, but... At the moment, it's it's pretty much just random if stuff like that happens, which is kind of unfortunate, but it doesn't happen super often. Uh, I'll let one of you guys start explaining decontamination skip. Uh, this one's a bit complicated, so we may not be able to explain it super, super well or completely in depth, but... So basically what he's going to do is he's going to finish this puzzle, but um, he is not going to deactivate the zero G just yet because he needs to clip out of this room uh, right after he finishes this puzzle. So right now he's clipping out of this room with a what's called an align clip. 
Um, and he's going to be lining up with a vent, which he will launch off of the top of this vent and uh, hit a door. Well, above a door. And then um, once he's above the door, he will hit the door from out of bounds, which will load the room that he was in. And uh, he's going to run through this room deloaded, and he's going to hit this door right here, which will load the rest of the level before him in, um, or load the zero G in. So once he's in the zero G, he's going to hit the door that he uh, entered the puzzle room, and that will load the puzzle oh. room in. Wait, oh. I can, wait, I can recover this. Hold on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I think if you do that, yeah. So we do that. Oh wait, no. Oh wait, that actually worked. Okay. Okay. So that's fine. He did it a little differently, but um, uh, what he's gonna do is he's gonna deactivate the zero G. So what he did all of that for was to deload the uh, room before decontamination. Um, so we can run through all of these doors, and he's going to be running through a locked door. Um, that usually. Uh, you would have to do a long decontamination. Yeah, if you played this game before, this might not actually look that fast. <laughs> because, okay, can one of you hit me, please? We got hit by a puker. Oh, he might hit me. Oh, he grabbed me. So that okay. guy just sniped well, him? Yeah. That's that's okay. <laughs> uh, hold on. Fortunately, we have the locator, sniped. so if we get lost at any point like that, it'll just tell us where to go. Yeah, so you do all of that to skip a singular locked door. Yeah. As that I was saying right before there. before I got stuck there, uh, if you play this game casually, you might think that's actually not fast because of all the roundabout stuff we have to do there, but that fight takes a really long time, so it's, it's very worth it to do. Uh, so what happened with the, the door, the zero-G thing, is uh, somehow I actually ended up opening it from the wrong side, which is pretty rare because it's the opposite direction Isaac's facing. But it's a, if you just let it close, it's it's it backs it up. It's honestly not even that much slower than the normal thing you have to do. And getting hit by the peekers is kind of random. There's not much you can do about it, and I happen to not have a health pack. I actually did have one. I probably should have waited to use it. But that's okay. So we're out of engineering decks. So that's probably the scariest part of Chapter 10 done now. There's just one more skip. We're going to skip most of medical deck by, again, getting a deload and walking through a locked door. And this is a locked door. You're not actually supposed to unlock at any point. It's just, it's just there. But when we deload the level, it loses its collision, and we can just walk straight through it. It's, and it skips having to take an elevator up, running across a bunch of rooms, and then take an elevator back down. Pretty nice shortcut. I mean, we still have to run through most of the medical deck, but it skips a pretty big chunk of it. Alright. So this deload's somewhat similar to the one we do in Quarantine Skip, except we don't have to actually push any enemies because they're already right next to the door that we want to deload. So what we do is we hit them with stasis so they stand still, and then we use this convenient stasis canister to freeze them there. And the nice thing about stasis canisters is they actually stay frozen longer than just a regular stasis shot, especially since we don't have time to upgrade our stasis throughout the run at all. Helps a lot. So now we're just going to kill these enemies. Nice. So now we're going to run through the level deloaded. Skip one locked door there. Grab this health pack. And then we have to open these doors in a certain order, or else the level won't be loaded and we'll just fall through the void. So we get just enough of the level loaded so that the collision is there. And now we load the level back in like that, and we're through. All right. We're not done with chapter 10 yet, but that's pretty much all the difficult parts done. Now we're just running to the bridge. Okay, I didn't deload. Nice. There's a ran There's a very, very small chance an enemy can hold the door open behind us, and if that happens, that room will just deload when we walk through it and we'll die. Which isn't the end of the world, but it is kind of annoying. And this is one of the few zero-g areas in the game we actually don't use for a skip. <laughs> Alright, so we're coming to the very last part of chapter 10 now. This is the bridge. This is another area where you're sort of intended to use detonators to kill a bunch of these enemies, but 
We're just gonna hit these pukers with stasis so they can't slow us down and just run straight to the end. Alright, do one of you guys want to explain this this last trick here? Yeah, I will. So, <clears throat> usually, um, you would, uh, when you uh, come to this part, you would open the door and you would hold down E for this um, for this panel here and you have to wait about 8 seconds. But what Shark's going to be doing is, um, is that you can actually hold the panel down at anywhere as long as you're holding E. You can just straight up run away from it. So he's going to be opening that door, running to the panel, run, running back so that he can, get, he can get outside of that room. Um, which saves about 2 seconds. The second thing that he's going to be doing here um, is he's going to be skipping an animation with Nicole in this pod here. So he's going to be... Um, Basically, it's uh, the trigger that loads Nicole in is visually based. So if you look up, then this trick won't work. So he's going to be looking down, okay. and then at a specific time, he's going to be mashing E and interact. Um, you can see that the panel to actually get into the pod is loaded. Um, so he's going to be hitting it earlier than the trigger with Nicole will spawn in because he looks down and, sma and um, he mashes and interact as fast as possible. What that'll also do is that'll also break the audio here. So you're not going to be hearing anything for like another minute before this cutscene ends. Yeah, the game audio comes back after this. So yeah, this would also be a really good time to read anything if you have it. But we will be... Oh, go ahead. Nope. I just wanted to say that um, we do not currently have any donations at the moment, but I thank you for the opportunity because I would like to remind the audience that you are currently watching Horrible Games Refresh. This is a one-day event where we are still raising some money for the Heartland Animal Shelter as we did with our previous event, Horrible Games Heartbreak, and our current donation total is at $51. We are hoping to reach around, uh, I believe it is, 100 and... Right, $167 total, because in doing so, this will mean that both events will have, re will have reached $1,000 total, and that is awesome to save the animals. I'd also like to remind that uh, your donations are tax-deductible as a 501c3, so no need to worry. You're doing it for a great cause. It's for the animals, and if you'd like to donate to Heartland Animal Shelter directly, you can type in exclamation point wish list or exclamation point donate to donate to our Tiltify page. And of course, we still have that target where if met with $150, then someone will be showing their hamsters and hamsters are wonderful, wonderful creatures if I do say so. Thank you very much and back to you, Shark. Thank you. All right, so we are coming into late game now, which is chapters 11 through 15. We did some specific movement and threw some mines in certain spots to kill those enemies as fast as possible, and manipulate their patterns so they don't run too far away from us. There's not a lot of rooms where we have to take care of those enemies, uh, called Stalkers, and that's kind of fortunate because they tend to hide from you, so having to actually kill all of them is usually a problem, but fortunately we can manipulate them into running at us at certain times, which is nice. Gonna be aiming down sights here because we have some uh, surface on the floor here that makes us walk slower, but aiming down sights on this is actually faster than walking. Alright, so we can get some different enemy patterns here, so we're gonna have to kind of react to what we get. I'm gonna use a stasis canister here just for safety, because this guy likes to snipe us. Okay, this pattern's actually pretty good. That exploder took out one of the slashers, so he didn't charge us, that's nice. And then we're gonna checkpoint restart there to de-aggro the enemies and reset their positions. I'm gonna try to dodge this enemy here with some tight movement. Nice, we got it. All right, so there's about three pretty big tricks right in a row after this cutscene coming up. So I'll try to explain the first one uh, right now. So there's a trick called Strauss Kill Skip, which as the name implies, we skip the cutscene where we kill Strauss. And the way we're gonna do that is we're, after we're, we get pulled into a zero G area, we're going to do a zero G clip to get out of bounds and then hit a checkpoint later in the level. And that's actually going to set up the second trick, because since we never actually leave the zero-g area, it doesn't deload from the level. So there's an area where there's an elevator shaft, and normally the zero-g isn't there, but now it will be. And we're going to be using that for a trick called punch up the shaft, after we get this. 
So checkpoint restart there to reset our position a little further back. And then we're going to fly over to the spot over here and clip out. Okay, it's trolling me a little bit, that's okay. There we go, okay, not too bad. All right, I'm gonna aim at a specific texture on the background there and fly towards it, and we should hit a, tr uh, a checkpoint here. And if we did that right, we also hit an audio cue. Okay, missed the audio cue a little bit, but that's okay. We still hit the checkpoint, okay, that's still fine. All right. Yeah, as long as you aim in the general direction there, it is very hard to miss the checkpoint. Yeah. It's a pretty lenient trick once you flip out of bounds. Alright, we're coming up on Punch Up the Shaft here. The trick Crazy mentioned earlier that used to be a meme and is now actually no longer a meme. It is a real strat. <laughs> so, if you've seen a Dead Space 1 speedrun, uh, you might know of a trick called Tilting. And it works in this game too, but it's a little different. And essentially, if you start punching while you're in 0G, and then you stop or if you just keep punching as you leave the zero G, I mean, you maintain those zero G properties. And one of those properties is being able to stick to walls. So I'm going to be punching onto the elevator and it's going to push us all the way up to the top. And even though the zero G doesn't extend all the way to the very top of the elevator shaft, we can actually keep zero G all the way up there and get out of bounds to skip a checkpoint. Uh, do you guys want to explain like invincibility glitch and drill skip and all that stuff? Uh, yeah, I can do it. So... Basically, what he's doing here is he is going to stick to this wall by using tilting. And he's going to, once he gets to the very top, he's going to be getting out of bounds and hitting the chapter 12 checkpoint. So once he hits the chapter 12, ch chapter 12. Twelve checkpoint. That is one step in drill skip. So glitch and drill skip and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, I can do it. So basically, what he's doing here is he is going to stick to this wall by using tilting, and he's going to once he gets to the very top, he's going to be getting out of bounds and hitting the chapter twelve checkpoint. So once he hits the chapter twelve ch chapter twelve checkpoint. That is one step in drill skip. So, basically, with drill skip, uh, you need invincibility. So, the invincibility glitch is once he gets to the top of here, the um, there will be a door um, that usually, if you open it from one side, uh, will trigger a cutscene. But if you open the door from the other side, and then you wait for the door to close and then open it again, it will actually give you invincibility from the cutscene but it won't trigger the cutscene. And what we're going to use this for is, usually there's a, a thing called a soft lock timer. And uh, once we fall out of bounds, we won't be able to get to um, like where we need to be uh, because we'll fall too long and we'll hit the soft lock timer. But with invincibility, it uh, makes it so we can fall as much as we want. And what we're going to do is fall all the way down to the chapter 11 zero G that we were in for Strauss kill skip and uh, actually fly to the chapter 13 checkpoint um, and hit that right when the uh, right when the drill hits its final phase. Um, so basically we're going to be waiting for a little bit for the drill to stop its animation or like get to its final animation and then it will load in chapter 13 and we'll be able to hit that checkpoint. But right now what he's doing is setting up the invincibility. Dang. <laughs> I don't know how I slipped oh, off there. No. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, okay, so he fell off. Um, I oh, actually no. don't know how that didn't. Yeah. I, I actually have no idea. I was, that's, yeah, that's that rough. can happen. So, right. yeah, you need to basically run over there really fast, and I, I guess Shark didn't do it fast enough, but that looked fine to me. I don't know. But anyways, you need to get on top of that ledge by uh, maintaining height and running over. Um, and what you, what you just saw can happen in that... Um, he, he basically fell off and that will reset you back all the way down and that's a pretty unfortunate trick. Yeah, there's no way to get back up there, so if you do fall off, you have to try again. Um, we should be able to get it this time. I'd like to show off the trick. If not, we can just continue. We'll, we'll be okay. Um, 
I think it's worth going for a second time. If we don't get it the second time, it's probably not worth to go for it a third time. Just because of the elevator ride, but I think we're doing okay. How are we doing on time, by the way? I can't actually see the timer. Uh, we are currently at an hour and eight minutes, so you're okay. pretty good. Yeah, we're this. Yep, yeah. that is pretty much correct. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Then, then we've we've got a little bit of wiggle room. Then. Uh, Indeed. I'm pretty sure I went high enough up. I don't know. I'm really not sure how you didn't hit it right there. That. Honestly, I felt like I actually went up further than I normally would there, but that's okay. Uh, I'm taking this pretty safe anyway. I'll, I'll just do my best. If not, we'll just have to do the drill. It's not really a big deal. Drill skip itself is not that hard. This is the, like, harder, the hardest part of drill skip. Yeah, it's really amazing um, that any of this even works anyway, because all three skips that you do... You can't, like, you can't just do punch up the shaft, you can't just do drill skip. Like, like, each skip is a prerequisite for the other. If you don't do Strauss kill skip, you can't do either of the two. And if you don't, if you do Strauss kill skip but not punch up the shaft, you can't do drill skip. So it's, it's kind of amazing that it all works out. Like, if you couldn't get invincibility, or if you couldn't get off the drill, or if the zero-g didn't extend into this room at all, like, if, if all of those things didn't just, like, work out, we couldn't do any of this stuff. Okay. You're very lucky that this works. Okay. Let's try this again. Alright, let's so get a wall boost here to get enough height. That should be fine. What? Okay. Well, I don't know. What you? I, I could probably do it one more yeah. time. What do you guys think? Um, uh, I don't know. Do you just want to eh. do the drill? Yeah, I would All do right. the drill. All right, Let's we'll do just do that. Drill. That's unfortunate. I don't know. I maybe you're supposed to hold sideways the whole time there. I kind of like held sideways and then forward. I feel like that's what I normally do. I usually just hold sideways as fast as I can, like go across there, but. Okay, well, that's probably what I did then. That's okay. That's a pretty easy fix for next time. It's a little rough, but... Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. So, this is the cutscene. Uh, the door that usually hits the cutscene. So if you open that door from the other side, wait for it to close and then open it again. That's what gives you the invincibility. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a lot of cutscenes in the game will give you invincibility just for the cutscene. I assume just so that you don't die somehow while you're watching it. Uh, for some reason, it still gives you the invincibility even though the cutscene doesn't play. Well, even though we can't do drill skip here, we can still do drill boost, which is what I'm doing right now. So there's a pretty long cutscene. We actually will be watching the cutscene later, but we're skipping it for now to save a bit of time. And now we've got to repair the drill so we can get on top of it. So we got to go grab an item over here for that. But yeah, like they were saying before, uh, drill skip itself isn't too bad. Normally we'd be taking that panel with us and using that to clip off of the drill once we got on top of it. And then once the level deloaded, we would have used Invincibility Glitch to fall all the way back down to that 0G for Strauss Kill Skiff, and then fly all the way into Chapter 13 just as it loads in. So now we're going to be doing this hack panel here, and then I'm going to be running into the cutscene that I mentioned before so I can overlap the drill turning around and the cutscene at the same time. So, <laughs> as you can see, this kind of uh, isn't supposed to happen, it would be one way to put it. That's one way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, that's okay. That's kind of unfortunate. I mean, we still get to show this off, so that's okay. I mean, to be fair, during drill skip, we pretty much just sit in a black void for like two minutes straight, like two, two and a half minutes. So, instead of that, we get to kill a bunch of enemies, so it's not, it's not really a big deal. Plus, there's another trick we actually get to show off now. 
at the beginning of chapter 13 that we would have skipped otherwise. You know, now that I think about it, even if you do have to do the drill, I wonder if you could still clip off and just hang, like, right there the whole time. It'd be kind of funny. It's that would be kind of funny. Enemies. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, you still have to kill the enemies, but it'd be funny. I don't think they'd be able to hit you, though. Which would be cool. Hardcore strat. Yeah. Yeah. It is a little unfortunate we didn't disrupt drill skip, but I mean, to be fair, we got both brute clips and quarantine skip, so I'm not gonna complain. Like, there, a lot of these tricks aren't super marathon. Like, I mean, they're they're marathon safe, but they're not. You know, you're not guaranteed to get all of them first try. So I'm pretty happy with this. Plus, we get a bunch of items here too, which is nice. It'll make the last part of the game a little easier. And those health packs are nice because I don't think we had any. And there's a lot of pukers in 13 that can snipe you. Also, this will actually give us an opportunity to get more credits as well, so we might not actually have to sell Flamethrower for extra money. I think you had enough money exiting Chapter 7. You had like 8,300 or something like that. If yeah, I how much do we have? Oh yeah, we have, we have exactly enough right now, so we're good. So, he needs enough credits to buy a gun called the... Uh, the contact beam and what this contact beam will do will allow him to basically one cycle the uh, the final boss, um, which is nice. Yeah, that, that's all we use it for. Yeah, we buy it in uh, chapter 13, basically the last chapter in the game, pretty much. So after this section, we're going to be coming up on, I, I mentioned there's a trick you wouldn't normally see in any percent anymore, but in the very beginning of chapter 13, you're on a two-story level, and normally you have to go watch a really long two-minute cutscene, and then take an elevator, and then you get to the lower level and can progress, but it turns out you can actually do a floor clip to skip straight to the bottom level right away, which is really, really nice, so we skip that long, long cutscene and elevator ride. So that'll be coming up in a little bit. We're pretty much, we're, we're pretty close to being done with the drill now. We just got a little bit left here. Sorry, I had to go get some food. I have returned. Welcome back. And as for me, I'd like to quick make a quick mention that unfortunately I'm going to have to pop out, but do not worry because we have our next host, the Scruffington, will be taking over for me very shortly. So uh, Sharkat, good luck with the rest of your run. And everyone, thank you so much for watching Horrible Games Refresh. It was wonderful to host but uh yeah keep on uh, supporting keep on donating donating for the animals and with that this is tempest out really? all right thank you see you later all right so that pretty much wraps up the drill just gotta wait till it for it to uh, get to the end here and then play a little cutscene i have way too much of that i'll drop that i do want to make sure my detonator is reloaded though which i think i just did but i'm gonna double check yeah, I wouldn't want to have you run die to that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the game tends to give you more detonator ammo than, like, any other ammo in the game, so... Yeah. The, am the amount of ammo you get per drop is dependent on the difficulty that you're on, and on casual, the game is extremely generous with the amount of ammo, especially detonator mines. I think you get four per drop or something like that. Which five. I suppose in... Or five. Which I suppose in casual play, if you're using it a lot, is... is Okay, but in the speedrun, we don't use it that often, so we don't normally need more than, like, five shots at a given time. And even that's probably more than you would need. So, usually with Drill Skip, we would have to wait in the Black Void, pretty much, for the entire drill. But we'd be skipping this cutscene and the cutscene after this. Plus, we'd skip, um another skip that we do here called chapter 13 floor clip yeah there, there's a lot of skips in this game that end up skipping other skips
So basically we're in the final area of the game pretty much called the government sector and uh, in the government sector the marker is here and we are trying to destroy it. Alright, so we're going to need V-Sync on for this trick to actually get on the table, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that on right now. Alright, so this usually goes by pretty quick, but we're going to run over, grab this bench or table, whatever you want to call it over here, slip it under our feet, and it'll clip us right through the floor and we'll hit a checkpoint. Nice. <laughs> I haven't done that trick in a little while, but... It's not too bad. So that hits a checkpoint you'd normally get right after you step out of the elevator. So instead we're going to appear right down here at the bottom floor. And we've got to do a hack panel here. And the game wants you to fight a bunch of enemies. Normally you just keep getting wave after wave of enemy and you, you try to do the panel in between waves. Instead we're going to try to do it just right away. Alright, got it. Okay, oh, so this is where skip. we would appear right here after drill skip. So we've caught up now. Alright, so last hard trick of the run. This is actually probably one of the hardest, if not the hardest trick in late game. Uh, it has a pretty silly name though, it's called Idiot Skip. And the reason for that is because we skip a cutscene where the main villain Tideman calls us an idiot. But not only that, we get a deload off of this trick. And it deloads when he says the word idiot, so that's... it's. It's sort of a silly name, but that's sort of where the name came from. But it is actually very difficult. So normally you pull a battery out of this room to progress the level to the next state it's supposed to be in. But uh, we can actually get out of this room before the door closes on us and locks if we do it right. What? Oh, the panel got in my way. Alright, nice. That was pretty good. Very nice. Yeah, so second try over first try it loses maybe three seconds so not that much time loss at all um you usually want to get it within three within three tries um so yeah basically when you get at this point your nerves are going and once you get it first try or second try you are very relieved because that is basically the last hard trick in the entire run yeah there, there is, is another chokeable trick though that we should not forget about very true that i choked everyone's choked yep. it before i think <laughs> everyone has choked it yeah <laughs> yeah all right, so the level loads in right there. So well, we never really leave the level bounds or back inbound, so to speak. All right, yeah. So like they said, there's not too much else in the run that's super difficult from this point. You just have to not choke and just race to the end, pretty much. There are there are some rooms where you can die or lose a bunch of time in 13. It's sort of a gauntlet. But not in the same sense of 10. It's more of a glitchless gauntlet at this point. Alright, so we skip that uh, that room there. Well, not really skip, but we skip having to kill the enemies. Ooh, I almost died there, okay. <laughs> Wow, that was close. Alright, so this is called the laser room here. And you're supposed to take shelter at a couple small little alcoves in this room and try to get around the room pretty slowly so you don't die. But it turns out if you have tight movement, you can actually just run around the entire thing all at once. Yeah, there's nothing crazy going on right now. He's basically just trying to run past as much as many enemies as possible, mm -hmm. um, which is honestly even the best draft to do in casual. Because especially in this room, the Thornal Conduit room, there are so many enemies. It takes like a very, very long time to kill all of them. So, so right here, he's going to be putting down mine gun mines, and he's going to be killing enemies that would usually hold that door open. Um, but when he kills the enemies. 
the door that he just opened will open quicker. Yeah. Um, which is very nice. Saves about a second or two. Yeah. So even though we're able to abuse the game quite a bit by deloading it, it's pretty clear the devs knew you could deload levels and tried to prevent you from doing so because some doors will actually wait if... Like, for example, if an enemy's holding a door open and you're trying to open a different door, the game will actually wait until that other door closes, until it opens the door you're trying to open. Because otherwise the level would just deload and you'd fall to the floor. Obviously we can abuse that fact, but in this case we actually don't want that to happen because the door will just load. It has to sit there and wait for the other door to close anyway. But we figured out that if you actually kill both enemies there, it consistently opens fast every time. Okay, so we need to buy contact beam here, but we already have our four weapon slots full, so we're gonna have to sell one of our weapons, so we're gonna get rid of the plasma cutter. It doesn't really matter what you sell there, you just need contact beam and line gun for the rest of the game, and we only use each gun once for the rest of the run. Alright, I'm now gonna move the contact beam to my upper slot here, because when you checkpoint restart, the game equips whatever weapon you have in that first slot. And we're going to be doing a checkpoint restart later to skip a cutscene right before the final boss. So we're going to put that in that slot so we can just buffer, aim, and shoot. So as soon as we load in, we can go ahead and start charging our shot. Alright. That is pretty much all of chapter 13. The rest of the game is going to go by really, really quickly. We're pretty close to the end here. I'd say about, what would you guys say, six or seven minutes left? Yeah, around there. Yeah. Yeah, we're starting to get there. There's only three more things we have to do. Well, I guess technically four, but there's only one actual difficult thing we have left. So after this cutscene, we've got the eye poke machine, which if you play this game casually, you'll you'll probably remember it's it. Usually, is it, it's it's very memorable. I'll put it that way. You'll if you've seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Usually it's a very stressful part casually, but we have a strat for it that makes it very free. Alright, last little cutscene here, and then we're into iPoke. So, normally you're supposed to lower the needle down really slowly, and Isaac's heart rate goes up the longer you move it down, and you've got to very, very carefully push it into where his eye is, and if you mess it up, uh, Isaac has a very bad time, just put it that way. But if you just buffer the input and hold it down the whole time, you'll always meet the same cycle. So as long as we buffer it and immediately put the needle where it needs to go, we'll hit the right spot every single time. This is probably the most monk uh, part of the run for casual people. Yeah. When they look at it, they're like, why is he going down so fast? He's gonna kill himself. Can we ever die here in a run? Uh, probably. I I'm pretty sure everyone's died here once, though... I've died here more than once. Yeah, since we found that... Well, so, people did used to die here every once in a while, and so we actually sat down and found this setup, and found that it was actually really easy, and now dying here is just a meme. Like, it doesn't really happen to anybody anymore. <laughs> which is nice. Especially in hardcore runs. Because if you die in hardcore, you're going back to your last save, which is basically a run killer, because you, you know, it's saving loses time, so... Alright. This is the very, very last part of chapter 13, and after this, we got about four-ish minutes left of the run. We're pretty much almost there. Normally, there's supposed to be two entire chapters left, but we are going to, after doing the attack panel and unlocking these doors, we are going to be deloading the level, getting out of bounds on a ledge, and falling down and hitting the last checkpoint in the game right before the final boss. It's extremely lucky that this works. Normally, skips in this game aren't that nice to us, but... This one's pretty easy, as long as we get on the ledge, which is what they mentioned earlier about choking. It's it's kind of easy to choke and fall off the ledge, because uh, your movement does have to be kind of tight, but it's not too bad. 
Yeah, it's more muscle memory than anything. Yeah. So this is the regenerator right here. Uh, we're not going to see him for the rest of the run. <laughs> it's the only time we get to see him. <laughs> yeah, dude. We see him a singular time, and that's it. All right, nice. Very nice. Watch you miss it. Nah, dude. Nah, dude, it's free. Trick's All right. free. All right, we're going for the best strat in the game. <laughs> yes, Isaac breakdancing. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, so we got our little final confrontation with Tideman. We don't really do too much. It's just it's essentially just two quick time events. So we're going to steal his javelin gun here. And you have to deal a finishing blow to him. It's a little faster to just immediately shoot the primary fire. You can ult fire him too, but it's... Oh, we got... Okay, that's kind of a... I don't even know if that's like a rare glitch. That happens to me so often. Sometimes the camera will just do that. I'm not... To be honest, I'm not 100% sure why. Oh, that's also... That's never happened to me. We skip a load trigger that loads in Nicole. So Nicole's model is supposed to be here right now, and we're supposed to be seeing her, but... Uh, she just doesn't show up, so it just you, you just see what everyone else would see uh, with Isaac. It just looks like he's crazy. Which he is. Which he is, but yeah. Alright, so as soon as that happens, we have hit the checkpoint for the final boss fight. So we're going to turn V-Sync on to allow the boss hitbox to stay active a little bit longer. And we checkpoint restart to skip a cutscene. A little bit of dialogue between... Isaac and Nicole right here. Let's turn off V-Sync real quick, and that's pretty much all we have to do. There's about yeah, like two-ish. and a half left. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much GG. There's about two-ish minutes left, and then a little flying sequence, and the uh, timer will end after the last quick time event. It's after the E symbol disappears. I'll let you know when we're getting right up to it, but it should be about one and a half to two minutes from now. But yeah, that w that's pretty much Dead Space 2 any percent. Like I said, it's it's gotten a lot more broken than it used to be just a year ago. It's been pretty amazing to see. Uh, I guess I'll take this time to shout out the whole Dead Space speedrun community. All three games are really broken. They've got really cool runs. We've got a lot of really great runners. Um, another Dead Space runner, Living Looney Bin, is going to be running Dead Space 3 later. So make sure to check that out and the rest of the marathon. There's a lot of great games on the schedule. So make sure you stick around to check that out. Uh, you guys have anything else to say? Anybody you want to shout out or anything? Um, I would like to shout out. We got Looney. We got Ted. I'd like to shout out Zio, Waifu. And uh, the rest of the gamer squad. Don't forget our boy Sir Kyle ninety five. Oh yes, and of course Sir Kyle ninety five. I do not have anyone to shout out. Awesome run, Shark. Thank you. Alright, about forty seconds from Oh, thank you. Alright, as soon as we lift off here, it's about thirty seconds left. Run prediction, I'm going to say a 133.02. Yeah, that seems about right. Might be on the dot there. Alright, the quick time event's coming up right here. Maybe an 01. Alright, after this quick time event. So time is right about now. All right, that's it. GG's, man. Nice. GG, dude. Thank you. And you already did all of your shout outs and everything? Sorry, I came in a little late. It was a quick uh, swap out. No, no problem. Let's yeah, see. I think yeah, we got all our shout outs done during the cutscene before that. So we're all set. Awesome. Let's hear it for Sharkat. That was a really nice run of Dead Space 2.
Uh, coming up next is going to be Layers of Fear 2, run by, excuse me, uh, going to be run by Ukmaru. So uh, stick around for that. It's going to be a real fun time. Uh, we'll be right back. Stick around when we get set up. Don't go anywhere now. Thanks.